If you have a dual band DMR radio that's on the list I'm about to show you, then keep watching because I'm going to show you something that will massively improve your radio. First off is the TYT MD UV380. Do not get this confused with the MD380, which is the one I have here. Even though they look the same, they're completely different radios, and what I'm about to show you doesn't apply to the MD380 only the MD UV380. Next is the Retivis RT3S. Again, don't get this mixed up with the RT3, which looks the same, but isn't. And it's not officially listed as being compatible, but the TYT MD UV390, which I have here, is basically the same as the MD UV380, except in a waterproof case. So it applies to this radio too. Again, don't get this mixed up with the MD390, the single band version. Next up is the Baofeng DM1701, also sold as the Retivis RT84. Then there's the Baofeng DM1801, version 1 hardware only, and the Baofeng DM1801A, also version 1 hardware only. Then there's the Baofeng RD5R, also sold as the Baofeng DM5R Tier 2. And then there's the TYT MD9600, also sold as the Retivis RT90. There's also the Radio Oddity GD77S, which I have here. And of course, the radio that started this whole project and gave it its name, the Radio Oddity GD77, also sold as the TYT MD760. Some of you may now have guessed what I'm talking about. It's the Open GD77 firmware and all the radios I just listed are compatible with this firmware. The OpenGD77 firmware is an amateur and hobbyist optimized open source firmware for DMR radios that has a significantly better user interface than these radios had initially, along with a number of really cool features that I'm gonna tell you about in this video. Probably the coolest of these features is the ability to show a band scope like you've traditionally only found in much more expensive radios. You just switch into VFO mode and then hold the hash button and up it comes. You can scroll around with the channel selector knob and then just press the green button to select the frequency that's in the middle of the screen and the radio tunes to that frequency. It makes it much easier to find new frequencies if you're using the radio more as a receiver or scanner. Just a note that because the compatible radios have different keyboard layouts, some of the things I show you in this video might be accessed slightly differently if you're using a different radio. This next feature is probably the most useful one, DMR RX AGC. This tries to level out the received volume from different stations on DMR so that everyone is at about the same volume. I've often found it annoying on other radios how I'd have to turn the volume way up for some people and then someone really loud starts talking and it blows my eardrums out. The next feature I want to mention is Talker Alias, Reception and Transmission. This is a feature that a lot of these radios didn't have at all before. I like this feature because it means you don't need to bother loading the whole database of ham contacts into the radio, which can be quite time consuming. Also, if you load the database and it's not quite up to date and is missing someone you encounter on the air, you'll see the talker alias information. At least you will if you're on a network that sends it. So you'll still be able to see the person's details, although it's usually less verbose than you get in the database. Another feature I like is the power settings. A lot more fine-grained power level adjustment is possible with this firmware. On this radio I can set it to 50 milliwatts at the lowest, 250 milliwatts, 500 milliwatts, 750, 1 watt, 2 watts, 3 watts, 4 watts or 5 watts. This is especially useful if you're using the radio on a hotspot and don't want to be wasting your battery by transmitting at a much higher power than is necessary. 
There's also the ability to calculate when amateur satellites are going to be over you. I haven't used this yet, but if you're interested then it's explained in depth in the manual. By the way, I must mention that the manual for this firmware is really detailed and easy to understand. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to have a look. Another feature is the ability to act as a DMR only hotspot. If you plug one of the compatible radios into a Raspberry Pi or other system running PiStar, the radio can act as the transmitter and receiver. There are also some features that are suited to people using the radio more as a scanner. The first is a color code scan functionality. It's not possible to completely disable the color code filtering in these radios, thanks to hardware limitations, but what can be done is to automatically scan each color code very quickly until the radio finds the right one. That's what the color code scan function does when enabled. This lets you listen into DMR frequencies without knowing the color code. It also has a time slot filter setting that basically does the same thing with the effect of letting you hear transmissions on either time slot. There's even a DMR CRC setting which can disable CRC checks. The effect of this is that the radio will receive systems with Motorola's Restricted Access to System or RAS turned on. Most DMR radios can't receive these systems but digital scanners and software decoders like DSD can and have always been able to receive them. Just a note while we're on the topic of scanning non-amateur DMR frequencies, please be mindful about what information you share online. It's not like 20 years ago when encryption was difficult and expensive to get. On DMR radios it's extremely easy to turn on encryption. All it takes is ticking a box and entering a key in the programming software. If whoever you're listening to searches for their business on Google or Facebook and finds posts with you writing about all the stuff you've heard or posting all the details like their frequency online, they're often not going to be pleased and they'll go straight to their radio dealer and ask for encryption to be turned on. So if you want to keep listening to something you find on the radio, don't post about it online. Let me show you the interface so you can see the clever way they've done things in this firmware that much better suits amateur use. In a normal DMR radio, you'd have to program a channel for each talk group you want to use on the correct time slot of the repeater for that talk group. With this radio, you have a group list assigned to the channel, a bit like an RX group list, if you're familiar with traditional DMR programming, but you can stay on one channel and then scroll through all the talk groups in your group list. Once you've decided which one you want to talk on, then you can simply key up and start talking. If you need to change the time slot, all it takes is a press of the star button, and you can see just up here, it changes between time slot one and time slot two. If you know a certain talk group is always gonna be used on a certain time slot, you can even set that in the contact for that talk group and it will automatically switch you onto the right time slot. For example, I've done that with the worldwide talk group and you'll see here it's changed me onto time slot one when I've got worldwide selected. At the time of making this video, there are some features that aren't implemented in this firmware. Text messaging isn't there, and scan lists also aren't present. But you can scan a zone or all channels instead, so this won't be an issue for most people. Finally, encryption isn't present. Encryption probably won't ever be supported in this firmware, because it's aimed at amateur radio use, and encryption isn't allowed on amateur frequencies in many countries. Overall, I'm extremely impressed by this firmware. It's incredible that a group of volunteers have produced such fantastic firmware, vastly outdoing the professionals over at Kydera, to such an extent that I'd recommend any of the radios this firmware works with over the GD88. If you want to try this firmware out, I'll leave a link in the video description to the website where you can find more information. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you could click the like button. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, you may also want to subscribe if you haven't done so already.